Hi there Ocean Explorers and welcome to our workshop on pollution problems. Today we're going to be looking at curriculum links for science and citizenship and we're going to be looking at these guys. This is a whale. Um, some of you may have seen a news story last year in December, a whale, a sperm whale, washed up on the Isle of Paris up in Scotland and scientists did an investigation um, to try and find out why it died. Um, and scientists looked at its stomach, it's called an autopsy, so have a little look um, at the contents of its stomach and have a little read, I've put the link in the uh, description below and you can read that news story and find out a little bit about that whale. And we're going to recreate that today um, and investigate what's in the stomach of this whale. Um, what we're going to need is a little tray and we're going to extract its stomach. So this is just mimicking what the scientists would have done for that whale in the, um, in the Isle of Paris. Um, and we're going to open it up and tip out the contents of the stomach. Ooh, smells pretty bad. And we're just going to separate some of the contents out. You can see them there. And what I want to do is try and sort these into things that the whale wanted to eat and things that they didn't want to eat. Now, these whales, sperm whales especially, are toothed whales and they can dive to up to 2,000 metres deep into the ocean and they can hold their breath for like 90 minutes. Um, we've also got baleen whales that um, filter feed um, and there's just really amazing creatures and they can eat lots of different things. So if we look in here, we've got this a little like prawn here. I think the whale wanted to eat that so I'm going to put that on one side. I've got a bit of sprat. I'm going to eat two bits of sprat here. Can you see? It's a little fish. You can see his little eye there. Mm. <laughs> I think the whale definitely wanted to eat that. We'll pop that to the side. Got a bit of cellophane wrapping here. I don't think the whale wanted to eat that. Another prawn. lid made of plastic. Ooh. Some little bits of squid here. You can see it's caudal fin there. You can actually see these really cool chromatophores on its skin. So squid are really good at using these to camouflage like the um, octopus that we have here in the aquarium and they can change colour to blend in really well with their environment. Um, this one obviously didn't because he got eaten yeah. Oh, the green drinking straw, I think this one is. I don't think the whale wanted to eat that, so I'm going to put that on one side and all the yummy foody bits on the other. Some of you might have already started looking at food chains in school, so maybe you could come up with a food chain that includes a whale and maybe some of these food stuffs that we've put here. Um, have a little go at researching what a food chain must have. Remember, it needs to start with a plant or a plant-like organism. Um, in the oceans, you could do plankton or phytoplankton. Um, but yeah, make sure you put your arrows in the right direction and send in some food chains that include a whale. Now, what I want us to be thinking about with this autopsy that we've been doing here is how did all this plastic get into the ocean where our little whale guy could eat it by mistake. And unfortunately, it is to do with plastic pollution. All of these plastic items that we're using are getting into our waterways and into our oceans and affecting the marine organisms there. But it's not all bad news. There are things that we can do about it. For example, we can use alternatives to single-use plastics. So when you go and get water bottles, it's very important to stay hydrated. Instead of using one of these, I'm sure many of you already have a reusable one like this. Or <laughs> hot drinking cups. You can use these as well. Now it's not all plastics that are a problem. Um, it's mostly this kind of plastic, these single-use plastics. The ones that we use one time and we chuck them away. Those are the plastics that we don't want to have. So have a think about alternatives that we could use. 
ones that you can use over and over again. And what we want you guys to do is download the um, single use plastic survey in the link below. And I want you to go around your house and I want you to tally up all the different single use plastics that you can find. Better yet, could you suggest some alternatives that you could have? For example, this plastic drinking straw that we don't want our whale to eat. You could take an aluminium reusable straw that can be washed out and used over and over again when you want to go and drink your milkshakes out at a restaurant after lockdown, of course. Whatever it is that you find, see if you can note down some alternatives you could use. Or, better yet, you might already have some alternatives in your household that you could tell us all about. One of the ones I love is instead of buying these plastic wrapped birthday cards when it's someone's birthday or um, Christmas, you can make a card instead using some recycled paper or card you've got around your house. Um, you could even use some of the craft videos that we're sharing here at the aquarium. We've got some to make being wrapping paper. Um, and there's loads of different things that you could do to try and reduce your single-use plastic. So have a go at doing the survey and remember to take a photo and send it in to us here at the aquarium so we can see what you've been doing up to.